At the end of the last video, we said that if x is any compact Hausdorff space, then any vector bundle over x is gonna be a sub-bundle of a trivial bundle. Using that, we're gonna show that every vector bundle over x of rank d is gonna be the pullback of this canonical bundle on the d Grassmannian of this Rn. To that end, let us first explain how we get this bundle embedding. Let's say that E is a vector bundle of rank D, then X must have an open cover UI such that the fiber of E over every UI is just going to be isomorphic to UI times R to the D. These are the local trivialization of this vector bundle. But X is compact though, so we can assume that this cover is finite, and thus we have a finite collection of local trivializations of this bundle. Observe that these maps Vi gives us local coordinates on the bundle using this projection map. To be more precise, let's say we have a point E in the fiber over some x here. Then Vi is gonna map it to x comma some point in R to the D and we can view this as the coordinate of E. This point here is just gonna be P2 of Vi of E. For convenience, let's just call that Psi I. So we see that over every ui, psi i gives us local coordinate on the fibers. That is what we have. But let's see what we want. We want this embedding. That means we want coordinate for every e here. The problem is though that we can't use this psi i because psi i is only defined on this open set. We need some map that is going to be defined on the whole of e. Well, no problem, because every point in E, in this big E, is gonna lie inside the fiber over some UI, one of these UI. So we could just patch this Psi I together. And the way to patch local information into global information is to use a partition of unity. So let lambda1 to lambda k be a partition of unity subordinate to UI. Then, given a point E here lying over this point X, we can send this E to the point x, comma, lambda 1x, psi 1e, and so on. Again, we need to use this lambda i because these psi i are only defined on a subset of this total space. Then observe that this is a well-defined point of x time r to the d and the whole thing to the k because each of these points here is a point in r to the d and here you have k of them. Now we also immediately see that this map is injective because if we have e prime and e lying over two different points, x prime and x, then the first coordinate is going to distinguish them. If they lie over the same point, then we know one of these lambda is going to be not zero, right? So if we look at the ith coordinate, right, we have psi i is local coordinate on this fiber, so psi i of e prime and psi of e must be different, so the ith coordinate is going to distinguish them. And thus this map is in fact, is indeed an embedding of vector bundle. Thus every vector bundle over x is going to embed uh, as a sub-bundle of some trivial bundle over x. Now every such embedding is going to induce a map from x to the Grassmannian, the de Grassmannian of Rn, in such a way that this vector bundle is going to be the pullback of this canonical bundle under this map. Let's see why that is. So what is this map here? Observe that under this projection to x map here, the fiber over every point little x is just going to be a d-dimensional subspace of r to the n because that fiber has to be the image of the fiber over x under this vector bundle, right? And we said that this is a vector bundle of rank d. So this fiber is a vector space of dimension d. Thus, to every point little x in x, there correspond a d-dimensional linear subspace of r to the n. And this gives a well-defined map from big x to this d Grassmannian of r to the n. And I should write this image with the bracket here to denote the fact that this is just a point in this Grassmannian. Now the pullback of the fiber over this, right under this map, is really just pi inverse of x. So we immediately see that E, this vector bundle, is a pullback of this canonical bundle. 
Thus, vector bundle of rank D over X corresponds to maps from X to the D Grassmannian of Rn. But here, for each vector bundle E, we are using a different N. And we want one target right, for every different vector bundle, so we'll instead just take the direct limit of all of these different D Grassmannian. With that definition, we then have a bijection between d-dimensional vector bundles over x and maps from x to this Grassmannian up to homotopy. In other words, if we define this functor uh, to spit out for every x uh, the set of d-dimensional vector bundles over x, then it can be represented by this Grassmannian of R infinity. And this concludes our discussion of how to view d-dimensional vector bundle over x as homotopy classes of maps from x to the d-grassmannian.